I am so excited you're here because I have several high-end Dollar Tree DIYs that I know you're gonna love. If that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Okay, y'all, we're going to start off with this bowl from Dollar Tree, and I just absolutely loved the bee pattern on the outside, so I knew that I wanted to make a candle with it. Now, you could very well melt these Dollar Tree candles down if you would like. However, I did want to actually burn this, and I knew that the Dollar Tree candles are uh, not all soy, and I'm doing my best to stay away from the toxic candles. And one of my best friends got me this candle making set for Christmas. So I figured that I would go ahead and make it using the kit that I already had, which was super cool because it has the black electric stove, the aluminum metal pouring pot. I don't know if that's what it's called. I'm just taking a guess. And then it also has like these little stickers for the bottom of the wicks, the wicks, as well as the little metal pieces to hold the wicks up. So I turned on the electric little stove. I also put the natural the natural soy wax into the heating pot and then while that was heating and melting down I put the stickers on the bottom of the wick and placed them in the bottom of my Dollar Tree bowl. Now I had these artificial flowers that I got from Amazon a long time ago. Y'all, I had bought a bunch of Dollar Tree candles probably about a year ago. And then I also bought these artificial flowers with the intent on making candles a long time ago. But if you're a crafter or a, I should say a seasoned crafter, then you know how it goes. You buy things with the intent to make something and it just goes to the wayside until you're ready to use it. So I was glad that I had them in my stash. And then my friend had also purchased the fragrances separate. They're actually just um, oils, I believe. So I ended up using the orange and I put a few drops in and I smelled it to make sure that it wasn't too strong. And then I ended up adding a few more drops. I would say I probably added about 10 drops of the orange essential oils. And then once I was completely melted down, I poured my wax into my bowl, making sure that I kept pulling the wicks up. I knew that with the way that I had the wicks set, it was going to be hard to use those metal wick holders so I just kind of made sure that they didn't fall down into the wax now <laughs> y'all know that I am super impatient and you're supposed to let this set up a little bit before you put the flowers in and I completely forgot about it I was working on a different project so it had um you know cooled off a little bit too much so all I did was take my blow dryer reheat up the top and then add in the artificial flowers that I liked that I felt went really good with bee decor and you guys that was it it is so easy to make candles I absolutely love the way that this looks and to think that we just used a simple Dollar Tree bowl literally blows my mind. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of DIY number one. If you're enjoying this video, would share this video out. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. That way you don't miss any Dollar Tree or regular DIYs. And with that being said, let's jump back into today's video. Okay y'all, for DIY number two and three, I grabbed these jars from Dollar Tree because the clear one, I felt it looked like little honeycombs. And then the green one, I felt like it, the little design on the side reminded me of a bumblebee. So I thought that it would be perfect for bee decor. So for the clear one, I give that two really good coats, uh, actually for both of them. <laughs> I give them both two really good coats of some white Waverly chalk paint. Now on the green one, generally with, um, painting jars you want to make sure that you start off with a light coat so on the white one I started with a light coat and then on the green one you want to go a little bit more heavy-handed because this one has so many details that you want to make sure the entire thing is covered before you dry it and move on to your second coat Now, 
Now, I again, I cannot stress this enough that you want to make sure your jars are very, very, very dry before you go ahead and put a second or third coat on because even if the paint is just a tiny, tiny bit wet, when you go to put your second coat on, it will pull up that paint. So that's just something to be mindful of. Once I had them completely dry with the second coat, then I'm going to take my Waverly Antique Wax and a chip brush and I'm going to dry brush all the way around each of the jars. Now this clear one, I forgot to mention that it had jute around the neck of the bottle and obviously I did remove that before I painted it and then I just used that same piece to put back on once the paint was dry. I repeated that step with the green jar but just obviously using a brand new piece and I just put a dab of hot glue in the back of the jar I attached my jute to that and then wrapped it around a few times, cut it, and then used my hot glue to make sure that it stayed in place. I then took this little bumblebee charm off of a different Dollar Tree jar. I believe I got this last summer. Don't quote me. I've had it in my stash for a while. But I loved the little bee charm on it, so I just removed it from the other jar and then tied it to a piece of jute around the taller jar. Next, I'm going to take my antique rub and, or not antique, yes, antique gold, <laughs> antique gold rub and buff, and I'm just going to dry brush all the way around each jar. And then that was it for this one, you guys. Look how cute that little bee charm is. I thought that the little design looked like bee decor, so you guys can let me know down in the comments what you think. So we're going to move on to the next jar. Again, I just dry brushed with my rub and buff. And then once I was done with that, I took this little circle that I got from Dollar Tree in a pack of like all types of different shapes and sizes of wood. And I used my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain to give it a distressed coat of stain. And then once that was completely dry, I had this tiny little bee's nest that I just transferred on to that little piece of wood with my white chalk paste. I made sure it was completely dry and then I also took this little bumblebee. Now originally I transferred that little bumblebee onto the top of the nest with my gold chalk paste but once I pulled it up you really couldn't see it so again I made sure it was dry and then went over that with my bumblebee chalk paste. Once that was completely dry, I just glued it to the front of my jar, and look how cute this turned out. I think it looks absolutely perfect with the pattern on the jar, with the rub and buff, like everything just looks so perfect together, and I can't wait to hear what you guys think of DIY number three down in the comments section. Y'all know I love to make my signs. So for DIY number four, we're going to take these two Dollar Tree signs and I'm going to start by laying them side by side, laying my transfer down and then just marking how big I needed it. I knew that I would have to cut this down. So once I marked it, I took my utility knife. I scored it a few times on the line and then I just bent it backwards and cut it from the back to remove that piece. I also sanded down the edge smooth to make sure that it was nice and even and then I repeated those exact same steps with my second sign to make one big sign. Next I'm going to lay them side by side again with the back facing up. And then I'm going to take my jumbo popsicle sticks that I got from Walmart and some hot glue and I'm going to attach the signs together. Next, I'm going to flip my sign over and I'm going to give it a distressed coat of my ink Waverly chalk paint, making sure to try to keep the paint away from the lines. I still wanted those lines to show through, so that way it still gave you that weathered wood rustic look. 
Now, I don't know, you guys. I do my best to edit these videos to please everybody. I got a comment in a different, well, I should say hundreds of comments in a different video that was like, oh my god, I don't want to see you paint the same thing over and over and over again. But I also try to take into consideration that not everybody is a seasoned crafter. Not everybody is a great painter. Um, so sometimes I get comments that like, oh my gosh, why do you cut out the painting? I love to see it. And then I get comments that say, oh my gosh, I don't want to see you paint over and over again. <laughs> so I don't know. Let me know in the comments, y'all. Do y'all like when I keep the painting in or would you much rather me? like cut that out um i have just come to the conclusion that i just do what i think is best because in this crazy world you're never going to appease everybody so if you have a channel or you know if you want to start a channel i would just highly recommend to do what you love and do what you feel is best because you're never going to appease everybody so i pull out my honey bee farm transfer i lay that down and i make sure to smooth it down really really well before i chalk paste on it so i used a combination of different colors for the wording on each side and the crown i went ahead and used my gold chalk paste for the wording at the top and the bottom I used white as well as the little flowers greenery I don't really know what you want to call that on either side of the bee and then for the bumblebee I used my sunny side paste and then I also just took my squeegee and went over the little flowers with the same paste to make it more of like a muted color yellow for the flowers And when I peel back this transfer, now you guys can see why I absolutely love Chalk Couture transfers. Y'all, they are so easy and quick to use and the image comes out absolutely perfect. So I go ahead and I wash my transfer. That is how you get the best uses or the most uses out of them, I should say. And then I laid that to dry and moved on to the next step. So I was going to be done after this, but y'all know I'm so extra. So I went in my stash and I'm like, okay, what can I make for a border that isn't the same thing that I use all the time? I really, really love to use square dowels for the frame. But for this particular project, I came across this Would You Bend. And what this is, is the Would You Bend comes in all types of different shapes and sizes. So this particular one comes in a roll. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to heat it up so that it forms the way that you want to. So you could put this on pots and make it in like a circle, if you will. You could do so many different things. That's why I love this stuff. So I just use my blow dryer to help flatten it out. I measure out the bottom, cut that, and then I also do the exact same for the top and the sides. Once I had all of my pieces cut, I'm going to lay them down on parchment paper and use my blow dryer once again to get them as flat as possible. Once I was satisfied with how flat they were, then I painted them with my white Waverly chalk paint, giving them a really good coat of the paint to make sure that that Would You Bend color was covered. Now for this particular pattern, I'm not going to lie, it did take me a few minutes to get in all those little grooves and crevices, um, but no big deal y'all. I love to paint. I don't know about you, but painting doesn't bother me, rather how small or big the project is. Um, so I just kind of put on some music and have a good time with it, um, but you can let me know if you guys have a different idea for this border. So once the paint was completely dry, then I took out my antique gold rub and buff as well as my ink Waverly chalk paint and I start by using my ink Waverly chalk paint to distress all of the pieces. I did not want to completely cover up that white so obviously I let the white shine through and then once I was done with the black then I'm going to use my chip brushes that I get off Amazon and I'm also going to dry brush all of those pieces with my rub and buff.
Now, because these pieces are made into a roll, you have to continue to heat them to get them into the shape that you want. So once again, once the paint was completely dry, I laid it down at the bottom. I used my blow dryer to flatten it out once more and then used my hot glue to glue that down. And you can also use wood glue with Would You Bend as well. Once I was done with the bottom piece, then I moved on to the top piece and the side pieces. Once again, I was going to be done with this sign, y'all, but again, I'm super extra. So I take my gold chalk paste and I once again distressed all the way around the frame as well as on the inside of the sign as well. Once again, I was going to be done. And then I was like, okay, what else? Like, I just felt that it was missing something and I could not wait to use these little honey dippers. So I took my hot glue and I just kind of put the hot glue on the top of the honey dippers, let it drip down. And then I also just kind of manipulated it to look like it was dripping even more. Once that one was completely dry, and I will give you guys a little tip, you can use your blow dryer on the cool setting with the cool shot to dry your hot glue quicker. And then I repeated that with the second honey dipper. Next, I'm gonna take my gold acrylic paint and I'm just gonna paint hot glue. And then last but not least, once that paint was completely dry, oh, and I did give it two good coats of that gold acrylic paint then i'm just going to glue my honey dippers on either side of the wording at the bottom and literally you guys that was it for this sign look how stunning this looks i absolutely love it i have already had somebody ask me if they could buy it so i'm super excited to hear what you guys think of this diy down below For DIY number five, I'm gonna take this little pot that I got back last year around St. Patty's Day, and I'm gonna start by stuffing it with a paper towel. Next, I'm just gonna fill in the top with some hot glue. I'm going to let that layer dry. I'm gonna do a second layer on the inside, and then I'm gonna go around the edges with my hot glue once again to make it look like honey dripping out of the pot. Okay, y'all, I got my little buddy here eating, so if you guys hear something, no, that's not your dog or your kid. It's mine. Um, but again, I just manipulate that hot glue, and y'all know I'm so, so, so OCD and extra. So it did take me a little bit to get the drips looking perfect, but once I was satisfied with the way that they looked, then I took another honey dipper, I put it in the top and then hot glued on top of that to make sure that it wouldn't fall out of my jar. Once the hot glue was completely dry, then once again, I gave it two coats of my gold acrylic paint. If you guys get a little bit of paint on the little black pot while you're painting it, do not worry because I actually did get quite a bit on the jar itself and I was able to just scratch it away with no problem. Next, I'm going to take my transfer that says honey and I'm going to just lay down the word 
And because this jar is curved, it, it does get a little bit tricky, and I knew that I would have some bleeding, but once again, it was no big deal. I knew that I could just clean it up afterwards, so I laid the word down as best as possible. I transferred that on with my white chalk paste, and then I pulled back my transfer. Again, it bled a little bit, so I made sure to dry it really, really well, and then I used my multi-tool to just scratch away the excess paint that was not supposed to be there. I then took these little wooden bumblebees that I got from Dollar Tree. I placed one kind of in the pot right next to the honey dipper with some hot glue. And then I also just glued a few more around the pot. Again, have fun with this, you guys. You can place your bumblebees wherever you like. You can switch up the wording on the front. It's totally up to you. And look how cute this is. I think it looks so realistic. I love the way that it turned out. I love the way that it turned out, and it looks so beautiful with all the other bee decor. Let me know what you guys think. For DIY number six, I'm going to take this little rattan, is that how you say it? Rattan, rattan, rattan bulb that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to glue this white rope around the bottom. Once I had the first layer down, then I'm going to take some nautical rope from Dollar Tree and I'm going to continue wrapping and gluing all the way around and up this bowl. Once I got to the top of the bowl, then I'm going to take this foam piece that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm going to take it out of the plastic and glue that down to the bottom of the bowl. Next, I'm going to continue by gluing the jute all the way up until I got to a point. And the way you want to do that is every time you glue the next layer, you're just going to continue gluing closer into the inside of the last layer and just continue that all the way around, like I said, until you get to a point. Now, this only took me about two and a quarter rolls of this nautical rope so I felt that really was not too bad at all. Once you get to the top then you're going to just kind of measure how much more you need, cut it off, and then you're just going to glue that down as well. And the end piece I kind of tucked down as best as possible. That way you wouldn't be able to see it. I then cut another piece of jute. I made sure that it was the size that I liked. I glued the bottom together to make a loop and then I glued that to the top of my little bee's nest. I made sure to hold that in place and then to secure it, I did go ahead and glue it on the back to make sure that it wasn't going to go anywhere. And then I took one of the layers of the white jute rope. I keep forgetting what this is called, y'all. I'm telling you, my brain is not. <laughs> Last month was a crazy month, you guys. We had so, so many things to celebrate and you guys are literally the reason. And I just wanted to say thank you. So this is April or May 1st and my brain is, is just like a mush right now. <laughs> 
So thank you guys for all the love and support. I cannot believe that we hit our big goal of 100,000 subscribers. I just can't get over it. And again, I'm just so appreciative of each and every one of you. So anyway, once I was done gluing the white rope to the top, then I just cut that down and glued it down to the back again so that you couldn't see the ends. And then I took a black Sharpie. I made a circle in the middle and then I covered that circle with some ink Waverly chalk paint and then I blow dried it really well to make sure it was nice and dry. Next, I'm going to take another piece of the nautical rope. I'm going to measure around the circle, cut it, and then glue that down. Now, because this nautical rope is so thick, you guys, I'm not going to lie, to connect this together, it was a little bit tricky, but no big deal. I just took my time. I kept twisting it together. That's why they have plastic on the ends of these, because it likes to unravel very easily. So, to connect it together, you just kind of want to twist and glue it down. And then, for the part that I glued down first, I put some hot glue in between there and then I just joined it as best as possible using my squeegee to hold it down into place. Once I was done with the little circle, to cover up where the jute joined together, I just took one of those little wooden honeybees from Dollar Tree and I glued that down into place. Next, I'm going to take these two ribbons that I got last year. Look how perfect they are. And I just kind of put them together and then made a finger bow with both the ribbons together. And if you guys need to learn how to make several different bows, I know a lot of you have trouble with bows. Um, first off, you can actually slow this down by the three dots in the right hand corner and you can actually speed up the video or slow it down. It's totally up to you, but I will link a full video of 11 different easy bows to make in the right hand corner for you guys. So once I made my simple finger bow, I'm just going to fluff out the little pattern so you could see both of them. And then I also pulled it tight to make it look nice and finished. And then I cut the ends into dovetails and glued that to the top of our little bee nest. Now you could not see the little ends, so I did just glue them so that they looked like they were naturally apart, but in actuality, I just glued them apart so that way you could see both patterns and look how stinking cute that was. Now I started to glue down more bees, so I glued one down on the left hand side at the bottom, and then I also glued one next to the one around the circle part. Um, but then I quickly realized that I wanted to put some honey pouring out of here. So I removed that second bumblebee. I also took a lighter to my twine. That way all the little flyaways weren't visible. And then I just took my hot glue and I made some faux honey dripping out the front and went and once that was completely dry, then once again, I used my gold acrylic paint to paint the hot glue. I also wanted to mention that I did put two coats of the gold acrylic paint on all of the faux honey on all of my projects. And then once I was done with this one, I glued the bumblebee back down and look how gorgeous this is. Oh my gosh, y'all, I'm not gonna lie. I was not too sure how this was gonna look in the shape that I did it, but I am so happy with the way it turned out. And I'm so curious to hear what your favorite DIY in this video is.
Okay, y'all, if you are still here, please leave me a bumblebee emoji down in the comment section. Obviously, if you can't find a bumblebee, you can just say bumblebee so that I know that you stuck with me this long and just know I appreciate you so much. So for the last and final DIY, I'm going to take this wooden house and I'm going to paint it with a distressed coat of my ink Waverly chalk paint and I did get this wooden house from Dollar Tree. Once my paint was completely dry then I'm going to take my chip brush and that same acrylic paint that we've been using and I'm going to dry brush all the way around the house as well as in the middle. Next, I'm going to take that same nautical rope and I'm just going to glue it all the way around the border of my house. Next, I'm going to take this Chalk Couture Bumblebee Transfer and I'm just going to transfer on the bee with my yellow paste up at the top with my multi tool it is a tiny little tool that way I could get in those tiny little details and then for the little pattern around the bumblebee I used my gold paste once again I'm gonna peel back that transfer and look how crisp that image comes out I'm gonna make sure it's dry really really well before moving on to the next step because if you try to lay another transfer down on top of wet paste it will just pull your paste up so I'm gonna use this same honey bee farms honey bee farms transfer I'm gonna transfer on the honey bee dry it then I'm gonna transfer on the farms underneath because this sign was just too small to fit the entire thing across make sure that's really dry and then transfer on the established 1894 underneath of that with my gold chalk paste and I transferred on the words above it with my white paste and then once again once all of that was completely dry then I'm going to take that little detail at the top of this transfer and I'm going to transfer that on to the bottom with my yellow chalk paste. Now you could totally stop here. I absolutely love the way that this looks as is, but again, y'all know I'm super extra. So I take this ribbon from Dollar Tree that has the little honeycombs. I once again made a simple finger bow. I cut the ends into a dovetail and glued that to the top of my house. And then to completely finish this sign, in the left hand corner where I joined the jute, I'm just going to glue down one of those wooden honeybees. And that was it for this project, you guys. That was it for this entire video. Again, I would love to hear which project is your absolute favorite. I also, once again, wanted to mention how much I appreciate every single one of you. I cannot believe that we finally hit our big goal. This is very much my accomplishment as yours if it wasn't for you I would not be here I want you to know I will never forget where I came from I want you to know how much I love and appreciate every single one of you and I also want you to know if nobody has told you today you are absolutely stunning you are worthy you are gorgeous y'all you can literally do anything you set your mind to coming from an addict who is nine years sober I know that if I can do it, you can do it as well. As always, you guys, if you did not know and you're new, I just recently lost 80 pounds with just a simple drink. I am so passionate about it. I want to help you guys look and feel good again, even if you don't need to lose weight and you just need better energy, focus, and mood. I'm your girl. I can definitely help you. So at the end of this video, you will find my phone number. You can text me the word ketones. I'll get you all that information. And then because I'm so passionate about it, I turned it into a business. I ended up joining the company because they pay me a really good amount to just share my story and show you guys how amazing it is. So if you guys want to learn how to make money from your phone by pairing your, by joining a company, 
with an amazing compensation plan. You guys, it's wild. I just earned a luxury paid for car. So if you guys want to learn how to make money from your phone, let me be your girl. Let me help you. Let me guide you and be your mentor. It is a huge, huge passion of mine to give everybody that I can time and financial freedom. Text my number, the word biz on the screen. And until next time, y'all, I love you with my whole heart and soul. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.